is the Writer's Almanac for Thursday. It's the 10th of March, 2022. It's the birthday of Henry Watson Fowler, born in Tunbridge, England, 1858, best known to us as the author of A Dictionary of Modern English Usage, published in 1926, generally referred to as Fowler's Modern English Usage, or even just Fowler's. It sold over a million copies. Harold Ross, the editor of The New Yorker, was a big fan of Fowler's, as was T.S. Eliot. H.W. Fowler taught at an Anglican boys' school for almost 20 years. Until he was 41, and he had a religious crisis, decided that he was an agnostic and could not keep teaching there. So he moved to an island in the English Channel where he lived alone in a one-room cottage next door to his brother, who was a tomato farmer. The two brothers did a translation of ancient Greek satirical writings, and then they collaborated on a book called The King's English, a composition manual, in which they advised writers to pass up the temptation for showiness and to be direct, simple, brief, vigorous, and lucid. In the chapter on vocabulary, they wrote, prefer the familiar word to the far-fetched, prefer the concrete word to the abstract, prefer the single word to the circumlocution, prefer the short word to the long, prefer the Saxon word to the romantic. In his 1926 guide, Henry Fowler wrote, display of superior knowledge is as great a vulgarity as display of superior wealth. It's a prescriptive book, 700 pages of instructions on what to do and what not to do. But Fowler is okay with prepositions coming at the ends of sentences or starting a sentence with and. He's not a stickler about the position of adverbs in sentences, and he was amenable to the split infinitive. He said, There are those who neither know nor care what a split infinitive is, those who do not know but care very much, those who know and condemn, those who know and approve, those who know and distinguish. He said that a split infinitive is not desirable in itself, but it is preferable to either ambiguity or to patent artificiality. Strunk and White's The Elements of Style and William Sapphire's columns on writing in the New York Times were very much in the Fowler tradition. Here's a poem for today by Faith Sheeran entitled Disappearing Fathers. Sometime after I turned 40, the fathers from my childhood began disappearing. They had heart attacks during business dinners or while digging their shovels into a late April snow. Some fathers began forgetting things, their phone numbers, which neighborhoods belonged to them, which houses. They had a shortness of breath, the world's air suddenly too thin as if it came from some other altitude. They were gone, the fathers. I had seen dissecting cars and garages, the fathers with suits and briefcases, the fathers who slipped down rivers on fishing boats, and the ones who drank television and beer. Most of my friends still had mothers, but the fathers were endangered, then extinct. I was surprised, though I had always known the ladies lasted longer. The fathers fooled me with their toughness. I had been duped by their jogging and heavy lifting, misled by their strength when they slapped me on the back or shook my hand. I kept imagining I would see them again, out walking their dogs on the roads near my childhood house, lighting cigars on their porches, waving to me from their canoes while I waited on shore. Upon by Faith Sheeran, Disappearing Fathers, from her collection Telling the Bees, published by Stephen F. Austin State University Press and used by permission here on the Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.